his servant as he writes these words this evening. The Word of God says tonight, See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to those two readings, two verses from his own precious truth tonight. There are many truths throughout Holy Scripture this evening, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, that compels sinners what they must do if they're ever going to be in heaven. Throughout your Old Testament and throughout your New Testament tonight, there are many great truths that strongly urges the unsaved what they must do to, in order to be saved. You take Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 tonight and verse number 31. There you'll find, friend, tonight, what we must do in order, if we're going to be in heaven, if we're ever going to be saved. Do you remember what we read in Acts chapter 16 and verse 30, number, number 31? This is what it says. Tonight. It says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I'll tell you what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, Believe on your church, and you shall be saved. For many are believing in their church tonight. Neither does it say, believe on your good works tonight and thou shalt be saved, because many are trusting tonight in their good works to be saved. No, Acts of the Apostles 16 and verse 31 compels sinners to do something tonight in order for them to be saved. What does it say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You go to your Old Testament tonight, and you'll find in the Old Testament great promises and great truths that compels what sinners must do to be in heaven and to be saved. You read Isaiah 55 tonight in verse number 6. What does Isaiah 55 and verse 6 say tonight? It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And if there's anything sinners need to do tonight, is seek the Lord while he may be found. And call upon him while he is near. And if you're in this meeting tonight and you're not saved, if there's anything you need to do tonight is to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. Because do you see tomorrow night it could be all too late for you? Oh, there's many great truths tonight in Holy Scripture that compels the unsaved what to do if they're ever going to be saved. You take Isaiah again, 45, verse 22. What does God compel sinners to do? Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other Savior beside me. Oh, friends, tonight there's great truths that compel sinners as to what they need to do this evening in order to be saved. Ah, but friends, tonight... There are great truths in Scripture tonight that compels us what not to do in order to be in heaven. You take Psalm 95 and verse number 7. You take Hebrews 3 and verse number 7. You take Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15 and Hebrews 4 and verse 7. And them four verses all say the same thing, what we must never do if we're ever going to be saved. 
What does the Bible say four times in those places? This is what it says. Today, if ye hear his voice. Harden not your hearts. You know, too many have tonight. Oh, they've heard God's voice all right. But they hardened their hearts, and their hearts have become hard. And the harder the heart, the less effect God's voice takes upon them. My text tonight tells us what we're not to do tonight if we're going to be in heaven. In fact, my text tonight makes it very, very clear what we must do tonight. And do this tonight, it'll spell your doom. You know what my text says tonight? What the unsaved must never do. Listen, if you're not saved in this meeting tonight, here's the last thing you need to do, and you never do it tonight. To your pearl, never you do it. Now listen to what it says. This is what God wants to say to your heart tonight. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Now what does it go on to say? For if they escape not who refused him that speak on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. I wonder tonight, have you ever heard God's voice speaking to you? God has many means and many ways of speaking. God always speaks through His Word tonight, friends. That's one way God will always speak to us. God will always speak to us through His Word. But you know, there are other ways in which God speaks to us tonight. Sometimes God speaks on beds of sickness. Many of people have sat for years in a church pew. And they never really heard the voice of God until they were in a bed of sickness. Sometimes we hear God speaking through death. A sudden death in the community can soon speak to people. God sometimes, when he speaks, friends, has to speak loud. W.P. Nicholson said many, on one occasion, men can be so hard that the only way God can get them to listen is to put them on the broad of their back. And that's true, friends. And old Billy Sunday, the old evangelist of a bygone day, said, sometimes the way God can only get us to listen is to bend us by putting a coffin on our back. Do you know, dear unsaved friend, tonight what God wants to do? God wants to speak to your heart tonight. God wants you to listen. And the last thing God wants you to do tonight is to turn your ear away as to from what he wants you to hear. I want you to notice, first of all, in that text tonight, first of all, there's a call. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Now, I want you to notice something about this call tonight. First and foremost, it's a personal call. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Do you see, friends, when God speaks? God speaks to sinners personally. I wonder in recent days, is there anybody in this service this evening? And in recent days, God has been speaking. God has been speaking to you, sir. God has been speaking to you, dear. 
hasn't been speaking to anybody else, but it's been speaking to you. See, God speaks to people personally tonight. I remember the year I got saved, 1985. There's, there was four in our house, my mother, my father, my brother, and me. And out of the four of us, God spoke to me. And I knew it, and I felt it, friends. God speaks. Remember the day when he was going out of Jericho? On his way to the cross, you remember, friend, that day he stopped at the bottom of a sycamore tree and he called Zacchaeus. How did he call him? He called him personally, friends. God calls sinners personally. Remember the day in the Damascus Road? Saul of Tarsus was going down the Damascus Road with all the great people around him. And when God cried out from heaven, the Lord Jesus cried out, what did he say? Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He called Saul of Tarsus personally. Wonder how many times God has called out to you, dear, personally, and you've known it. It's a personal call. I want you to notice something else in that text that's a powerful call. Because see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. You know, friends, God still speaks today. Don't you try and tell me God doesn't speak today. Listen, I'll tell you, God still speaks today. Two Saturday week, two Saturdays ago, he spoke to my mother. And thank God he didn't only speak her, but he saved her. Don't you tell me tonight God doesn't speak today. I'll tell you, God still speaks. You see, when God speaks, friends, you'll know God speaks. And there's three things God will speak to you about. You know the first thing God will speak to you about? The first thing God will speak to you about tonight is to speak to you about your sin. Do you know, friend, why God will speak first about concerning your sin. The first thing God will speak about is your sin because it's your sin that's keeping you out of heaven and it's your sin that's driving you into hell. It's your sin. God will always speak about your sin. And do you see when God speaks to you about your sin, I'll tell you, you'll know it because you'll have sleepless nights over it. How many people have I heard given their testimony? And they talk about sleep falling away from their eyes. They were afraid to go to sleep just in case they would die unsaved because they knew they were sinners. Wonders God ever spoke to you about your sin tonight because you remember what the Bible says, we all have sinned tonight. Doesn't matter whether you're a Protestant or a Catholic. In God's sake, you're a sinner. Doesn't matter why you go to the Baptist church, brethren, or free Presbyterian, or anything else. Listen, in God's sake, you're a sinner. But God will not only talk to you about your sin, God will talk to you all. God will always speak to you about your, His Son tonight. God will always speak to you about His Son. God will always bring not only your sin before you, God will always bring His Son before you because it's His Son tonight that He sent into the world to be delivered into the hands of wicked men and to be crucified. God will always bring His Son before you because God will always say to you tonight, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Because God's Word teaches tonight, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. God will always speak to you about your sin, dear. Ah, but God will always speak to you about His Son. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates to open wide. Ah, friend, how many times has he brought your sin before you? How many times has he brought his son before you? Listen to me. How many times has he brought your soul before you? Because you have a soul tonight. 
And you have a soul tonight that needs to be saved by grace. And you have a soul tonight that needs to be redeemed by precious blood this evening. You have a soul tonight that will live forever. And it will exist as long as God exists. You know what God says about your soul? First and foremost, the soul that sinneth it shall die. And what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? That's the call of my text tonight. No friend tonight, listen to me. God always speaks. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. I want you to notice something else, the cost of the text, because it says this, For if they escape not, who refused him that spake on earth? Listen, I'll tell you tonight, dear, and I'm going to tell you someone, love, in simple Ulster language this evening, listen, if you refuse to listen to Christ, you're lost. There's no escape. You say to me, George, escape what are you trying to tell me? Escape what? I'll tell you, to escape the fires of hell. See, if you die unsaved, you're going to hell. If you die unsaved, you're going to stand before God one day in your unsaved, unclean, ungodly state. If you die unsaved tonight, you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, or, sorry, the, the, the great white throne judgment, and you're going to hear the Lord Jesus say to you, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the fire that burneth with brimstone. That's what you're going to hear if you die unsaved. That's what you're going to hear tonight if you refuse to listen to what God says. Oh, there's a cost tonight for not listening to him that speaketh. Wonder tonight, have you counted the cost? If your soul should be lost, and to think tonight that you heard his speaking voice, and like Felix, you tremble. Like King Agrippa, there was a time when you could almost say, almost, I was persuaded to be a Christian. Ah, but you didn't do it. There's the cost to me. See that ye refuse him not, not, him, not him that speaketh from heaven. Because tonight, he seeks to save your never-dying soul. The purpose for the cross was to pay the price against, that was against your sin. And you're left without excuse tonight. And see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. You ever think of it tonight? You ever think of it this evening? Your final journey. Do you ever think about your final journey? The final journey you'll take is the journey through the valley of the shadow. Where will the valley of the shadow lead you tonight? I'll tell you where it'll lead you. If you refuse to listen to what Christ says and if you refuse to listen to what Christ is demanding tonight, You'll be in hell. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. Do you know what it asks? What shall the end be of them which obey not the gospel of God? Two young men one Sunday afternoon many years ago 
at Oxford Island, got into a rowing boat, rowed around the shore of Loch Ness till they came to a wee place called Golly's Gate, and there's a pub there. They went in for an afternoon's drinking. They come, I think it was four o'clock in the evening, and they talked about heading home. And the man who owned the bar at that time told them, listen, let me drive you home because there's a storm coming. Don't you take the risk. The boy says, listen, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. These men knew Loch Ney like the back of their hand. They knew every wee stretch of water. They knew every wee enclave. But they didn't take the barman's advice. And as they made their way home that night, friends, in that rowing boat, and when they were almost home, when they turned the final corner, suddenly they went under. There was no sight nor sound of them. And their families came to the shores to see, and they sat there along the shore with their headlights on to see, was there any sight? Three long, weary days of searching. And they finally got the boat. And the two boys trapped. Dead. It was all over Lurgan. But these two well known lads who were drowned on that Thursday night so long ago. What the barman said was, they wouldn't listen to me. How many people are lost in hell tonight? And God would say, they wouldn't listen to me. See, that ye refuse not him that speaketh. Because tonight, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Do something about it tonight before it's too late. Let's pray. Lord, we thank Thee that this day is still the day where sinners can hear Thy speaking voice. Any, Lord, tonight that's in this meeting not saved, 